Why have you come here? Because I'm Couch Coop and this is number one of the top 25 Couch Coop and Splitscreen games of all time on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. It's a big one and it took six months to get here, but we're here. What's this? This is a trailer for Baldur's Gate 3, which was shown at the Game Awards and I've been following it. It's been in development for like three years because I want to talk about the developer. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. Shocking disclaimer, I've also put more than one video game in the top spot. I sort of picked a game that needs an alternative to it that appeals to just about everybody. I've tried to cover both the bases because my number one choice is a little bit niche. So I need to be careful about pushing a lot of my audience away with it. We are of course talking about the Divinity Original Sin series and we're gonna dive in and have a look at the first installation because it was incredible. Fire it, Nice. Now stay dead. I am featuring a couple of Couch co op YouTubers in the form of Julie and Lyle and they have really delved into the original Divinity 1. It's an incredible game, quite large. It was very clear from playing that the studio were taking the subject matter very seriously. What level is he? Nine! And the game format, and when I say format, I'm referring to an impeccable split-screen setup. Absolutely jaw-dropping when you first fired this up back on a PlayStation 4 in 2015, can you believe? Not cool! Sorry, Nick. So here's the stunning Divinity Original Sin 2 running on the PlayStation 5 in two-player mode. And what I love about the system on this game is if you stick together enough, the screen doesn't split and you kind of get that feeling that you are in a singular game. But the selling point for the entire series and for me on this as a couch co-op video game is that the autonomy is absolutely through the roof. You are not hemmed in remotely with what the other player is doing or needs to get done. Many fragments swell on my shore. See what I gather. That system in a turn-based action ARPG like Divinity Original Sin goes an extremely long way because some of the combat in other third-person ARPGs can be laborious or annoying or even going through various processes. You never really have the game pulled away from you as player two. You are very much independent and that is just a slick system because it also dovetails into the development of your characters in the party, i.e. if you go and play one player, you still get the XP that your couch co-op friend produced when they were playing with you as that party member and it's also drop in drop out which I hadn't tested before so uploaded my single player save and then started playing second player turns the pad on hits options bang they drop in and take over as many party members as I allocate very cool stuff mind your manners round Griff eh that also goes for dropping out, so the convenience is excellent. With games like this, you need to play them in like two or three hour stints, so someone may have to come and go within the time that you're sitting there. It may not sound like a huge selling point, but when you're playing a video game and you've got to quit and restart to add somebody, it can sometimes just outweigh the <laughs> enthusiasm for getting them to join in the first place. It's also doing very well on performance and is boasting some blatant PlayStation 5 boosts. I don't know the numbers it's one of these games that doesn't sit on the ssd or hasn't had a playstation 5 official update pass through but it's slick and very high resolution and extremely smooth on frame rates the game doesn't worry too much about being massively busy as a turn-based game you don't see huge graphical fidelity taking place on screen but there's certainly a lot going on in the background with stats and numbers and sometimes on the base level playstation 4 machine especially with the sequel it would chug a little bit when turns were switching out that sort of stuff. Absolutely smooth and beautiful experience on the five. Sword and Sorcery isn't for everybody, and I'm also not the biggest fan of turn-based fantasy games. I much prefer turn-based like future machine gun gene stealer games if you get my drift. But the Divinity series just won me over. With its split screen implementation, I straight away needed to have a look at it. But once you get sucked into the story and really start investing in some of the characters that you've chosen to put on your team, which let me tell you this, changes on every replay because you'll know where other hidden NPCs are or really cool people to have on your party exist on playthrough. So you just start mixing it up. It's never the same with your party loadout if you want it to be. So the immersive and detailed story in the investment 
agreement with the team that I built and the continuation of the events from Divinity 1 having that brilliant start on the ship just sucks you in there's no ignoring it once you play a little bit you're like oh my god there's so much fun to be had behind all of these wicked stats spells elements monsters team build and magicians is absolutely crazy good teleporting crocodiles how are you supposed to deal with that what sort of game says we'll put crocodiles in right which can basically insta kill you and then they're like oh we need something else yeah let's make them teleport why not totally in canon with the species wanted to include some cool footage of the autonomy we are in completely different sections of this map i am getting on with a completely different sub quest and i have said that before few games offer that side by side feeling of autonomy it's like you've got two copies on one screen try doing something like that on gears of war or tiny teenies you'll get ripped into a cutscene that the other players instigated the immersion pulling away is everywhere this is really dig your heels in and have a proper gaming session on a superbly deep action ARPG, brackets turn-based. They were so mesmerized by Apon's storytelling that they spent the whole night transfixed. You know I couldn't help myself do it. I snuck it in, didn't I? Snuck it in right at the end. You know I was talking about that niche audience thing and turn-based stuff turning some people off. Jordan and Water is Divinity Original Sin in goddamn real time. Not got the same amount of party size, but this is a white knuckle ride through a superbly written and imagined nightmare sword and sorcery world, roguelike elements, a campaign-like structure, amazing 16-bit animations and colors, pixel art. The vibe is through the roof with Children of Moa. It's hotkey system still blows the mind, and the fact that the studio are really quiet about sequeling anything from this side, bit annoying, I want more content. That free DLC was absolutely amazing, link in description, and this stands head and shoulders above just about every other action-based couch co-op ARPG on the market. I shit you not, go and look at it. It's really one of the last games I'll be talking about on the top 25 list. What are we going to be looking at on a couch co-op level for 2023? Well, there are some really cool indie Game Pass and some PlayStation exclusive couch co-op games that have come out right at the back end of December and in January. So I'll scrape them together, put another list out pretty soon. And I'm deep in my Monster Hunter Rise obsession. You'll be seeing the PlayStation 5 online review of that coming out shortly. It's so damned impressive. It's my previous video. Please, please have a good butchers. Links to Judy and Lyle in description, and I'll leave you with a classic mantra and an achievement that popped up to my complete surprise. I have been Couch Coop. I will see you down there.